Status conditions can be some of the most important parts of battles. We all know that great feeling that we get when we hit ourselves in confusion. But what if every type had its own status condition? That is the question that Shebsky has asked today. I asked if I could react to this video. He said, go for it. And I said, absolutely, thank you so much. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and create my own status conditions as we go, just off the cuff. They'll probably not be very good. And you can do the same thing in the comments section below. You could do it now for all of them. Or maybe type your comment as you're watching the video. The original video will be linked in the description. And I'd encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to his channel as well. Poison, Paralysis, and Burn are probably the first ones that come to mind. But the full list of status conditions is quite extensive. And includes everything from the prevention of sound-based moves to being plagued by nightmares from a shadow monster. Oh, I forgot there's, there's a lot. There's curse. There's... There's the bad dreams, there is Attract, everyone's favorite, Attract, which is ridiculously powerful for some reason. Jeez, I thought these were kids games. A lot of the time we as fans associate these status conditions with specific typings. Burn is often a result of fire moves, poison a result of, well, poison, and confusion really. often being a result of several psychic moves like confusion. Okay, maybe it is just a kids game. There are plenty of moves that can inflict a status different from their type, but for the most part, we associate certain effects with- I do like that. I really like it when there are non-type related moves that give other status conditions. Like, Skull just makes sense. It's a shame they gave it to every single water type under the sun and over-centralized the entire water type move base, but it, it is what it is. Thinking about this in depth led me to the question, what if every type had a chance to inflict its own status condition? In other words, just like how most electric moves have a small chance to paralyze, what if every type of move had a chance to inflict its own signature status Oh, there's effect? so many blinded! I've done some research and with a combination of existing status conditions in Pokemon, along with influence from other RPGs, I was able okay. to make a complete list of statuses for every type in the game. Okay, I'm here cool. to tell you about it, because why else would I spend my time doing that? I'm Before excited! get started, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe okay. to the channel for more Pokemon content. I already did, my but I'll, I'll give you that like. It. Let's get started with the easiest of the bunch. Okay. Fire, electric, ice, and... Oh, we're giving them new ones? Wait, we're not just keeping... Wait, we're giving them new ones? Oh, God. Well, I mean, I kind of like how burn works, cut and attack. I feel like there should be a stats condition that would also cut the special attack. You could do the same for defenses, HP. Well, you not, can't really do it for HP. But you could do the same for defenses as well. Like, for example, if you get frozen, ice quite brittle. So you could smash it easier. Maybe if you're frozen... You don't necessarily stop you from attacking, but your defense gets cut in half. Or if you are paralyzed, your special defense gets cut in half, or something along those lines. These four already have status conditions associated okay, with them, never mind. it's important to fully review their mechanics as they help set the standard for many- Yeah, no, I, I thought- that's, I knew we weren't gonna make new ones, actually. New I knew that. Burn has two effects. Taking away 1 16th of HP every turn, and having the user's attack stat. The second yeah, it used to be insanely overpowered. It used to do one eighth of your health per turn and also half your attack stat. It was ridiculous. Which is especially good to remember for later. Paralysis also has two effects. A 25% chance to do nothing each turn, and similar to burn, having the user's speed stat. I think it used to quarter your speed and you had a 50% chance not to move. So paralysis used to be insane. And for some reason, my tiny pea brain as a, of a child, my five-year-old pea brain, Never used it, because I just thought, ooh, attacking move. That's all that matter. Then there's Freeze, which fully immobilizes which is ridiculous. Pokemon, giving it a 1 in 5 chance to thaw out every turn. That's insanely broken. There's a reason why there's no guaranteed Freeze. There's no guaranteed Freeze move, is there? There's no, there's no guaranteed Freeze move, right? I don't think there is. Lastly, Poison is a bit special. Of course, there's the Standard Poison, which takes away a 16th of HP every turn. But there's also Badly Poisoned, which is the same concept, but adds Compounded. an additional 16th every passing turn. I know most- God, Toxic is so, like, centralizing as well when it comes to inflicting status. Toxic could be learned by every Pokemon, basically, up until a certain point. I'm not sure if it's still like that, actually. I think they removed it from a lot of Pokemon, but it used to be so good. Ridiculously you know good. already, but if I didn't go over them, somebody would inevitably say I forgot about them. And like I said, it's important to see how these existing statuses affect the new ones. Like with the Steel-type's new status effect. Okay, Steel-type. So, I thought that a cool idea, since steel and bells, and when you clang steel, it makes a ringing sound, I thought a cool status effect for steel would be ringing. So, you have maybe uh, sound damage that occurs every turn. You can't use any sound-based moves because your hearing is impaired, uh, and you become weak to other sound-based moves. Like, you become weak to, say, your ears are sensitive now because they're ringing and now you're, you're weak to hyper-voice. 
That is what I thought could be a cool little steel type stairs. Let's see what we got. Inspired by poison, I'm getting steel both a piercing and bleeding effect. Oh, bleeding? That's cool. I didn't even think about that. I was thinking about the bludgeoning power of steel. I didn't think for a second about the slice and power of steel. Bleeding is a pretty common status effect in RPGs, typically draining the character's HP over time. Yeah, I like that. Putting this into piercing and bleeding gives us the same dichotomy as the poison type, as there's a less pressing version contrasted with a more immediate worry. They would never put bleeding in Pokemon, but that is a cool idea. Maybe piercing makes you more vulnerable to certain types of moves. Unfortunately, I doubt this one would happen because I don't think no. the Pokemon company wants to be associated with anything mentioning blood. There would well, never be blood in Pokemon. Blood Moon Ursaluna. When the pale blood moon Ursaluna shines across the land. Oh, sir. Quick challenge for you. These typings won't be in any particular order, so see okay. if you can guess which one I'm going to mention last. Last? Uh, I feel like Dragon will be a pretty hard one, so I think that's going to be last. Just don't guess the Psychic type, because that's okay. next. Okay. I already mentioned earlier that Psychic is commonly associated with the Confusion status, so who am I to break up a good thing? To re Maybe Mind Impairment. Something to do with your mind. Obviously, Confusion is basically the same thing. Mind Impairment, it would be like, oh, I don't know what move to use, etc., etc. Maybe you would use a random move. Instead of using the move that you're told to use, your mind would be all befuddled and you'd get a little bit wrong and you'd use a random move instead of using the move that you were told to use. This, the same kind of deal as when you don't have enough gym badges to train a Pokemon, they use a random move instead. Cap, confusion afflicts the user with a one in three chance to hit themselves. It lasts anywhere from one to four turns and it disappears when you switch out. Looking at these mechanics, I realized that this same logic could be applied to another popular RPG status effect being blindness. Most okay. RPGs use blindness in a way that affects accuracy, so blindness can be used in- Oh no, I would hate that. That would be- I thought this would be the dark type status effect, to be honest. But blindness, every time I see it pop up, I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3. When you're in the darkness, you, you kind of see a bloody thing. It's like all of your accuracy essentially goes to nothing. In the exact same way as confusion, except instead of hitting yourself, you hit nothing. What I okay, it's a one in three chance to hit nothing. So it will reduce your overall accuracy by one third. I wonder how that would interact with moves that always land or moves that have lower than 100% accuracy. Would you just take the accuracy that has and reduce that by one third or I don't know. about this is that it would be objectively better to be blinded than confused, but I feel like more players would be upset about missing completely as opposed to hitting themselves. But you could be both, since confusion is not one of those. I don't know how to describe it. Why, how would you describe paralysis, burn, frozen, sleep? Because you can't have two of those at once, but you can be confused and poisoned at the same time. So they're different kind of status effects. I feel like it has something to do with all the focus blast and stone edge memes I've seen over the years. Yeah, it's it's moving right breaking. Along. With that being said, competitive players make the best, fun the funniest Pokemon memes. Like it's not even close. I saw this tweet from Wolfie recently about Snoop Dogg stopping the smoke. He's given up the smoke. He said wheezing when it runs levitate instead of neutralizing gas. I'm like, yeah, well, competitive players, they're the funniest of us. What can I say? Um, here we have Fairy. This fairy. I feel like he's gonna go with the infatuation, but fairies do have a magical nature to them as well. What could you do with that? So what would be really interesting would be there could be a 25 or 20 or 10% chance to use a random, really weak move that would not be beneficial that the Pokemon doesn't know. Since fairies are magical in nature, it makes sense that they will be able to inflict a status that allows you to do things that you wouldn't be able to normally do, but it's also to your detriment too. That would be cool. This is the last typing to be given an already existing status condition, being infatuation. Because of course people are okay. infatuated with fairy types. Just think about all those fairies people love to fawn over. Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. That's just a, uh, it's just, that's an animal. That is an animal on my screen right now. Like Granbull, no. mm. Aromatis, yeah. uh -huh. Blefty. And people Ooh. love those. Okay, maybe not the Talk. best examples, but infatuation is still the perfect status for fairies, as many of them have Q charm for an ability anyways. It makes sense. Infatuation causes the Pokemon to do nothing 50% of the time as it's immobilized That's insane. Love, which is also how I would describe most of my interactions with my dog. For some reason, I don't know why, I used to think that infatuation was based off of the moves that you would learn and it would randomly choose three of your moves and if you, collect, if you selected any of those moves, you wouldn't be able to move that turn. But if you selected the one that wasn't the infatuation move, then you could attack. I have no idea why I thought it worked that way. 
That's just how my child brain works in generation two when Miltank would use a tract. I'm like, oh, I can't use Razor Leaf now because it's an infatuation move or something like that. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I'm so dumb. Infatuation only goes away when the infatuated Pokemon switches out or when the one it's lusting after switches out or faints itself. Lusting is a crazy word to use there, but I'd uh, sure, yeah. It's definitely an annoying status condition, which is also a good time to bring up that while I tried to keep all these effects as balanced as I could, there are going to be some statuses that are just better than others, just like the typings themselves. Now let's look at the dragon type. Oh, dragon wasn't last. Okay. Dracos, dragons, big guys. You know, one status effect that I always thought would be a really cool idea is if ghost types inflicted fear. While I was opening this video, I saw there was a fear status effect somewhere during this, so I don't want to make it seem like I predicted this or anything, but I really thought it would be cool for ghost types. I might, that could apply to dragons as well, because dragons are generally quite scary things, but if there was a fear status effects that could be inflicted by ghosts or dragons that would say maybe stop you from attacking or maybe potentially force you to switch out because the Pokemon is so scared of the opposing Pokemon it doesn't want to be in the battle anymore. That could be kind of cool. If we apply similar logic to the fairy situation, I think it's safe to say that most dragons would instill a big sense of fear in almost- Yeah, I wanted to make it known that I had the idea for that for ghost types a while ago because I used to talk about that on stream without stealing um, Shep's idea. Any opponent. Fear itself is actually a mechanic used in several other RPGs, so May its flee. placement here works pretty well. May flee now, from there's a variety of ways RPGs have used this status over the years, but here I think it's best used by preventing a Pokemon from using any attacking moves. Sort okay. of like a reverse taunt. Now at first I thought this That's would be interesting. overpowered, but considering the concept of this video, this status would only come as a result of dragon moves, which are arguably the least useful for offense as they only hit themselves for super effective damage. That's true. Plus, but I mean, hey, they're not resisted by a huge amount of types, apart from fairy, steel. I think that's it, actually. So outrage is crazy good. Fear would work along the same lines as infatuation, meaning it goes away when the afraid Pokemon swaps or when the fear inflictor goes down. Yeah. All in all, I think this is a really fitting status for dragons. I, I still love the idea of ghost types making Pokemon scared of them so they're forced to switch out. I think that's cool. I mean, who wouldn't be afraid of Diplin? Right? To look at is the f hey, if I tried to take a bite into a candy apple and it started smiling at me and it had a tail, I'd be a bit scared. Fighting type. Oh, fighting type. Okay. I think a basic one for fighting type would be maybe like frenzied or berserk. That could be a beneficial status inflicted on yourself. You inflict frenzy on yourself. I've been playing way too much Baldur's Gate. I'm sorry. That gives you maybe bonus attack maybe a higher crit ratio, maybe double attack, who knows, but just with fighting type moves or just with moves that make physical contact because you want to get right in there, in the depths with your enemy and start like beating them up. With dragon working as a reverse taunt, fighting is a great spot to implement the actual taunt effect, but with a twist. I chose to give fighting a status condition named reckless. Reckless, okay, okay. Mine was mine was berserk. I think both First, are good. I wanted this to work like a berserk effect, but there's a- Oh. <laughs> I was, I was going to call it Berserk or Frenzy, but that issues. works. Most Berserk effects in RPGs increase damage output, but either make mm. the user uncontrollable or attack at random. Okay. With most yeah. Pokemon battles being a one-on-one, -on -one, and only having four moves as opposed to the longer list of actions and skills in other RPGs, it didn't seem like the perfect fit. So instead, I decided okay. on Reckless. With this status, a Pokemon would be inflicted with the Taunt effect, and would also deal recoil damage to themselves with every attack they used. Actually, speaking of Reckless, again, hey, how's it going? Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, enjoy here. There's a ability in that called Reckless Attack that gives you more of a chance to hit, or it would do more damage, potentially in a Pokemon scenario, but you take more damage as well. So you, when you do your Reckless Attacks, you, you deal more damage, but the caveat is you can also take more damage potentially as well. This would go away upon switching out, or maybe at the end of battle as a whole. I really enjoy the recoil aspect of this in particular, as it's something Pokemon doesn't play around with as often as it could, and honestly should. Hey, the recoil. Next type I want to look at is Ghost. This, this is fear. This is make your opponent switch out. Upon looking into this idea, I immediately knew what the Ghost status would be. Or I, I guess it would be Curse, right? Spooked. Mostly oh. because it's fun to say. Is it gonna make him switch out? Spooked. I'm not scared. The effect itself, I thought something similar to infatuation would work well, but further consideration okay. led me to the very simple effect of switching the opponent out to a random Pokemon yes. or ending the battle in the case of a wild encounter. Yes, like yes, Whirlwind that's it. Roar. I don't know about you, but personally, if I was spooked by a ghost type, I would get the hell out of there immediately. Exactly, so that's what I'm saying. Spooky Pokemon like Sandygast and Sinistee and Litwick. 
If you drink Sinistee, it kills you. So yeah, exactly. Next up, I have the grass type. This was especially difficult as grass has a number of options. Okay, my idea for this is entangled. You get entangled in roots, in vines, and flowers, or maybe flowered. That would work similarly to leech seed. You know, you sprout flowers and it feeds energy back to the original Pokemon that made you sprout the flowers, but that's, that's just leech seed. Entangled, so you can't move, your speed is cut. Maybe you can't use moves that require you to close a gap or attack physically, so you can only use more ranged attacks because you're entangled and you can't move. That would be kind of cool. Sleep is probably the most obvious one, but even for a hypothetical list, giving every grass move the chance to put something to sleep is just too overpowered. That's insane. I felt similarly about an HP draining effect, but it's not as overpowered of a choice, so it could replace what I chose just as well. As for what I decided on, grass would inflict the status rooted. Performing Wait. the opposite effect of spook. Wait, is it the same? No, do we have the same brain? Dude, people are gonna say that I've watched this beforehand. I promise I have not watched this video. I think we just have the same mind. Rooted would prevent the opponent from switching out. Oh, okay, okay, so it, it does it does different things, okay. My idea was you can't close the gap, you can't really move, it cuts your speeds, you can't use anything except ranged moves. This effect could this last is different. anywhere from three to five turns, but I think okay. three is the magic number. That's cool, I like that. This seem like an underwhelming status, but in a competitive setting, this could really ruffle some feathers. Or oh yeah, dude, like in my Then We Fight videos that we do on the main channel, there's so much switching going on. You always wanna try and maneuver yourself into a better position. Maybe you could use moves like Volt Switch and U-Turn. Maybe they wouldn't work. Maybe they would work with Rooted. Guess, rustle some leaves? The Rooted effect would be distinct from the effects of Mean Look because it would last even if the Pokemon who caused the Roots switched out. And with okay. three full turns of your opponent being rooted, you could switch to a better matchup and set mm -hmm. up twice before your opponent could switch That's to something true. else. That's true. Like the rustling of some leaves, huh? Yeah, for Finish sure. The starter trio, here's the water type. Ooh, water, dripping, dripping wet. You take more damage from electric type moves and ice type moves. Uh, you become slippery. You have a chance to trip. There's a trip chance. You can't run in swimming pools because the water is wet and you can slip and fall over. So there's a chance that you could uh, slip and do however much damage to yourself when you're trying to attack. And you're weak to electric and ice now. Unlike grass, this one was a lot easier. I decided to name this status Flooded. A flooded Pokemon would always move second and would also have their okay. evasion stat cut in half. Oh, because they're like wading through water? Oh, that makes sense, okay, got you. The concept here is simply, you're wet, you can't move that fast, you can't yeah. dodge that fast. That makes Pretty sense. Pretty simple, but it would be an effective status condition. Mm -hmm. Especially gotcha, if gotcha. you gave it one more tweak, which would make a flooded Pokemon weak to ice moves. I same brain cells, man, same brain cells. Go either way for this detail, but overall it would be more interesting if statuses influenced the type chart. Sort of how a Pokemon hit with the move Tar Shot is suddenly weak to fire moves. That would be cool. Also, it would be really funny to see certain Pokemon soaked. He's you know, so, as long as so they wet. survive it. The bug type was a little difficult to decide on, and while I'm happy with what I chose, it's one of the only status effects I don't want to see implemented. Bugs. The only thing I can really think of for bugs would be like an infestation type of thing where you'd potentially take a little bit of damage over turn. It's the same thing as the infestation move, where there's creepy crawlies crawling all over you. Maybe you take a little bit of damage per turn. Maybe they stop you from switching out. It's kind of hard to think of one for bugs, actually. Mostly because its concept is mortifying. Okay. The bug effect would be... Infested by bugs, right? Infested. I'm just, dude, same brain cells. No one's gonna believe that I haven't wa watched, I have not watched this video. I'm just so freaking same brain cells. So, quick fourth wall break. I somehow scripted and recorded all of this before remembering that infestation is already a thing. So let's oh. just pretend <laughs> for the rest of this segment that it isn't a thing. Cool? What move? Cool. I've never heard of that. We've never heard of that move. You've never heard of that move. Cool. It would be the exact same thing as fire type, where they lose a 16th of HP every turn, but instead yep. of having the attack stat, it would have the special attack stat. Okay, There's yeah. already a bit of a precedent so for this, as the Dynamax move Max Flutterby in Sword and Shield had the secondary effect of lowering the opponent's special attack. Not okay. to mention, special attack is often associated with the mind, and a swarm of bugs all over me would definitely mess with my mind. Yeah, no, I 100% get that. Yes, so definitely. About both ground and flying, which would have the effects of shape. Oh, oh uh, spoilers. Okay, ground. I would just think of like grounded, like you are stuck in the ground. Like there is quicksand sucking you in and you are stuck in the ground. So you can't move as fast. Maybe you're more vulnerable to being attacked. Maybe you're less evasive. It would cut your evasiveness. So you're more likely to be attacked because you're kind of stuck in the quicksand. 
when it comes to flying, maybe you could get a beneficial status that you could apply to yourself, almost like tailwinds, but instead of doubling your speed, it would give you a plus one boost into speed and a plus one boost into attack. Like it gives you a dragon dance. It makes you more likely to evade moves because you're moving faster at that point because you have the wind in your sails, to so to speak. Uh, let's see what you got. Taken and flustered. These two cover our last main stats very well, with Shaken having defense and Flustered okay. having special defense. Okay. In addition to this, I think it would be interesting for Shaken to have the user's crit chance, while Flustered doubles the user's chance of being crit. Okay, okay, okay. I got I get I that. At That's cool. Like this. With Shaken, you're unstable and it's harder to land that perfect strike. And you're not stirred either. With Flustered, you're thrown off and not as aware, making it easier for your opponent to land a perfect strike. That's cool, that's cool, I like that. would go away upon switching out, and while they could last a limited number of turns like Confusion or Blindness, I feel like they're already a pretty non-threatening status, so only losing the effect by switching seems like the better balance. They don't have to be incredibly powerful, I agree. It, if you're applying these to a lot of moves that already do really good things, like Earthquake for example, you don't need to have uh, something that does a ton to help you, just an additional little status ailment, on top of something to add a little bit of spice, a little bit of flavor to certain types would be cool. Is is Rock up next? Overall, I feel like these two help to fill those stat gaps pretty nicely. Our penultimate typing is the Rock type. Ooh, Rock. I could think of two names that were either Crumbling or Rumbling. No, Crumbling or Bludgeons. Bludgeons would make it harder to hit your foes because when you get punched in the face, you get disorientated and it makes it harder for you to attack. It would maybe make you weaker on the physically defensive side. Crumbling, you'd potentially be damaged over turn, uh, weaker to bludgeoning moves, weaker to moves that make physical contact, that's contact that aren't slashing. Essentially something that could break down a wall if it was already quite weak. And to be honest, we this one was easily the most difficult for me to figure out. Okay. But while I thought blindness could fit here with the mentality of pocket sand, Okay, this sure. Seem better suited for the dark type. I agree. Many RPGs have a petrified effect, but they usually Ooh. turn the character to stone, completely inhibiting them from doing anything. Which yeah, I mean that's kind of like freeze, is isn't it? Too broken to be a status condition in Pokemon. And it was it's freeze. You could unpetrify yourself, right? It could be a temporary petrification. So instead, I decided to tweak it and made a less harmful version of petrified, sort of like petrified light. The Pokemon would still be turned to stone and wouldn't be able to do anything, but it would immediately break out of that state once they were hit with an attack. Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Switching out, but maybe that would make it too easy of a status condition to deal with, so I'll leave it up to you. Well, it would force you to either switch or force you to take a hit. While it's not the most powerful thing in the world, it's still, it could make you maneuver into a really good position, especially with competitive players. You petrify an opposing Pokemon, they can't do anything. They're forced to switch out, you can set up, who knows? Because you have to be hit with a move, so if you start using Swords Dance, they have to switch out. They are forced to switch out, they can't do anything about it. This felt like a decent balance, but out of every status condition, it's still the one I'm least satisfied with, so if you have an idea of what could yeah, be the rock type, please let me know in the comments. Like crumbling or bludgeons, I, I don't know, it's a tough Our one, it is, it is a hard one. Look at is normal. Normal, normal stats ailment. I kind of thought confusion would work well with normal because Regigigas and Spender both are confusion specialists, basically. We should make a status condition just called Larry and you just have to go to work. For one, congrats to those of you that guessed the correct type. I didn't. But more importantly, what kind of status effect do you do for the type meant to be completely neutral? My status effect for the normal type would be- oh, It's hard, I actually can't think of one. The only thing I can think of is you have an effect called neutrality where it just deletes your ability. Because you're neutral, I don't know, It's that's tough. That's the only one I can come up with, delete your ability with, with neutrality. No, which would have the very simple effect of negating all type interactions. Oh, that's interesting, okay. I actually thought that Null would delete the ability too, and I was about to get shadammed by the video again, but no. the Null status, everything hits you for normal damage, and you hit everything for normal damage, regardless of the move. Interesting, now, okay. A cool concept to play around with. I could go down a full rabbit hole with this concept alone. Hey, you see a Null Shedinja, you run the other direction. It'll probably never happen, but it would be really interesting to see this status condition, as well as all the others, put into a Pokemon game in some way, shape, or form. But then people will be like, oh, there's way too many status conditions. This is bullshit. I hate this hey, now. You're a cool person for watching till the end of the video. And Thanks! People like you should subscribe for more Pokemon I already content. did! I already freaking did! I already did, Shep! I already freaking subscribed!
And you should subscribe to Shep as well, whose link's in the description. And if you care about delicious beverages, you could also use code Pirates at Gamersubs for caffeine or caffeine-free variants of delicious things that ship worldwide and less than a dollar per servant. It's amazing, truly spectacular. Thank you so much.